Today is Tuesday, September 28th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Coming up, we've got the full rundown on Spencer Basin's move to CJB Motorsports and their plans to run the full World of Outlaws season in 2022. We've also got details on Brandon Overton getting some open wheel seat time, and we talk more about this ongoing USAC Midget Championship battle between Chris Windham and Buddy Kofoid. Before we get going, if you'd like a free and easy way to support what I'm doing, you can subscribe and follow the show and leave me a review on iTunes or wherever you watch or listen. That will ensure you don't miss future episodes and will help others find the show. You can also follow uh, Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. That's at D-I-R-T. Uh, R-A-C-K-R, and DirtTracker.com is home to a bunch of cool dirt racing content, including analytics, updated news, and a whole lot more. Now, let's do this. We found out last Friday that Spencer Basin was departing the Sam McGee Motorsports team following a pretty successful summer together between the Outlaws and All-Stars, and it didn't take long to find out his new destination. CJB Motorsports announced yesterday they have signed Basin to a two-year deal and will move back to being a full-time team with the World of Outlaws in 2022. The Pennsylvania-based sprint car team hasn't been a full-time member of the series since they left following the 2019 season and split with driver Shane Stewart. They ran the 2021 or the 2020 season as a pick and choose schedule with Brent Marks, and they entered 2021 with plans of chasing the All Star Championship. But when things went sideways with Marks in the spring, it's been a round robin of drivers through that five car ever since. Paul McMahon was supposed to run a part time schedule in a second CJB car, and he was suddenly thrust into Marks' seat full time. With Spencer Baston and Buddy Kofoid then scheduled to share a second car. But it hasn't all gone to plan since then. McMahon picked up a win at Portsmouth to close Ohio Sprint Speed Week, but hasn't been in the five since August 12th because of a concussion he suffered uh, in a crash at the Knoxville Nationals. Ian Madsen has been in the five as of late. Basin and Kofoid did make a few starts in that second car, but Kofoid's season has been scaled back when he suffered injuries in a pavement late model crash, and Basin has been driving for McGee. After all the chaos and instability this season, crew chief Barry Jackson and team owner Chad Clemens have decided to get back to what they know, fielding a high-quality ride with the Outlaws. Jeremy Elliott at SprintCarUnlimited.com wrote two different pieces about the based in signing, and in one of them, Jackson admitted things haven't gone how they've hoped since the departure of David Gravel following the 2018 season. Gravel finished third in the Outlaw standings three straight years with CJB, including that incredible 2017 run when he won 18 times. Jackson told Elliott, quote, we've learned some hard lessons from the past. We had a really good thing going with David Gravel and things got messed up. We've struggled to get back to that point, unquote. What a kind of interesting moment of honesty and clarity there from Jackson. I think it's pretty rare across the landscape of motorsports for a team to kind of admit something like that. But I think this clarity from Jackson and Clemens is a big reason behind the move for Baston. Find a young, talented driver like you had in gravel and get back to what you know. Jackson also told Elliott that he isn't sure how the crew will be comprised yet, but he's prepared to be the crew chief for the whole season if necessary, but is also looking at just being the team manager. Going forward, CJB will field the five for uh, for Paul McMahon in the season's final All-Star Weekend at Fremont coming up, and that is if he is cleared by doctors. The team will also run with the Outlaws to close out 2021 with Baston and get a head start for next season. Their first events together will be this weekend at Williams Grove for the National Open. For a driver that has been much improved this year, the stability could pay dividends for Baston. He picked up his first World of Outlaws win at the Brad Doty Classic in July and then added two All-Star wins to his resume at Sharon in July and Attica in September. He's not run a full sprint car schedule yet in his career, but the seat time this season definitely paid off in the stats. Besides the three wins, Basin has picked up quite a few top fives and top tens, and his average finish with both the All-Stars and Outlaws is better. Running full-time with the Outlaws is a different beast, though, but if Basin and Jackson can gel quickly, they could compete for race wins next season and be in line for Rookie of the Year. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of the move and your prediction for what this combination might produce next season with the Outlaws. If you missed it last night on social media, Millbridge Speedway here in North Carolina tweeted out a video of late model star Brandon Overton getting some practice laps in a micro sprint. The car was one owned by Kevin and Jordan Swindell and has been driven regularly by young up-and-comer Gavin Bochel. In the video, Overton looked comfortable riding around the Millbridge cushion, but there's no official word about where this could lead. There have been some rumors about Overton potentially working on a ride for the Chili Bowl, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Crossing over between late models and open wheel is something I don't think happens enough in dirt racing, but I think if anyone can do it right now and be successful right away, it's definitely Overton. It's been really fun watching Kyle Larson do it for the past two seasons. And on top of it, just being something I think a lot of us would like to see, it could be really good for Overton's career. Expose him to a new group of fans and maybe raise his stardom just a little bit more. We'll keep you posted on if more comes out of this. I talked a bit on yesterday's show about the recent run of success for Chris Wyndham with the USAC Midgets. And over the weekend at Four Crown, a third on Friday, along with Saturday Night's win, were good enough to see him snag the championship points lead from Buddy Kofoid. Wanted to dive a little deeper into this today because Wyndham hasn't taken the points lead because Kofoid has struggled. Incredibly, Wyndham has just done it by turning up the wick a lot, and suddenly he's on fire with the series. Just to give you an idea on the season that Kofoid has had, in 30 midget starts with USAC, he has 4 wins, 20 top 5s, 28 top 10s, and an average finish of 5.2. He's also currently riding a streak of 13 straight top 10s, and this has come despite him racing with injuries. When you compare those numbers to Wyndham's from last season when Wyndham was champion, Kofoid would have probably been the 2020 champ, uh, champ with these stats. My point being, Buddy has had a very good season. So it's a bit shocking to think that he's not currently the series points leader. But since mid-June, Wyndham has been very good and in hot pursuit of the young California shoe. Over Wyndham's last 17 races, he's finished 8th or better in 16 of them, including 5 wins. His average finish over the previous 5 races is a series best 1.6. And since finishing 21st at the BC39 at Indy in August, Wyndham has finishes of 4th, 2nd, 1st, 1st, 3rd, and 1st. That's how you put together a late season charge to win a championship. Down the stretch, Wyndham's experience will be tough to beat, but the final nine nights of the year all happen at West Coast racetracks where Kofoid grew up racing. Late in 2020, Kofoid picked up victories at Bakersfield and Arizona and finished second at Merced. All three of those tracks are part of that final stretch. Don't sleep on this USAC Midget Championship battle here. The only thing on the streaming schedule for today is Flow Racing 24-7. Again, to see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.